Rocky Romero. Calling from beautiful downtown hot Miami. And I'm an investor for 30 years, consultant for as many years. Uh, I've been coaching businesses for about 15 years. And I started a mentoring program about five years ago that I still continue doing that. And uh, certainly the question I ask myself is, uh, what can I learn from this? I, I think the leaders have to adjust and change. Prior to the COVID, maybe you could agree with me on this. I think the here in the U.S. more than the rest of the world, but here in the U.S., I think the thought was, you come to the office, it's command and control. I want to see you working. I want to be able to have productivity come out of it. And we get results. COVID happens for two and a half years, and maybe it's still going on. And all of a sudden, that shifted quite a bit to a point where the leaders don't see their people unless it's on a Zoom, unless it's on video. And now they probably feel that they lost some control. I'm not quite sure what they may have think they lost, but maybe some influence, maybe some control. Maybe that's the word. And now they have to shift as a leader because now we have a hybrid environment. Shift as a leader from command and control mentality to what I like to think, for lack of a better word, a coaching mentality so that the leaders become more empathetic, much more people oriented. They ask, they don't tell, and they request. And of course, they still give the salaries and those things that motivated people. But I think the leaders have had to shift and they don't want to. <laughs> um, it's very difficult. Uh, being a coach, it takes a different mindset. Uh, from being a consultant, I think the world was consulting, now shifting to a coaching mentality. And I think the world has to have both of those. But I think that mentality doesn't fit as well yet for leaders. However, the companies that are doing really well <clears throat> is because the leaders have adjusted tremendously well to a coaching mentality. Let me give you an example. I think Microsoft, especially from the example that we received this morning from the other speaker, Microsoft is doing really well uh, simply because they shifted their culture. They're much more uh, collaborative as opposed to competitive that they used to be. And uh, they're going forward. Apple is doing well, although they're struggling about getting people back in. But I think they have tremendous products and benefits. Um, uh, Starbucks is kind of struggling a little bit, but they always had Starbucks stores where people, they have to work face to face. So it's not a remote situation. But in Amazon, of course, have had ups and downs, but I think Amazon um, is also doing well. But they're also shifting. I think those leaders have had to shift to a coaching mentality, and that's very challenging for them. So here's the thought as, as Pat and uh, Malcolm were sharing their ideas, is what is the tension that's going on? There's always a tension. And I think that wasn't clear when I listened to the speakers, that what is the tension that's going on? And as uh, Malcolm said, we're supposed to listen to the coaching, the disruptive, disruptive leader. So what is their tension? And I'm thinking the tension is how do they how do they scale their business? They want to grow their business. And the other part of the tension is with the people, the competencies. So I'm thinking that might be the tension. You have competencies and you want to scale. And of course, they're not scaling as fast as they want to. Everybody wants to go as fast as they can because the competencies may not be where they want them to be or where they can be to scale faster. And of course, we have a lot of disruption that's going on in the world. Um, I think the COVID is uh, replaced by the monkeypox. Uh, we have a, a war that's a disruption in the world. We have the, uh, the climate change uh, situations. Uh, so there's a lot of things that are disrupting supply chain. I think that, uh, that was spoken about before. Not 
not killers, but they are disruptors that we have to address. So I'm thinking the tension is probably that, that. And as coaches, we have to look at how do we help a company, a leader to scale where they want to go with the talent that they have, the competencies. And, um, and so I think what it means is you, you, improve, you improve the people. They need coaches. They need you. They need you. They need you. They need you. They need to be taught how to coach. And they, that way you can get those people up. I'm wondering if I'm resonating. I wonder if that's true. The leaders are not willing to change. And they're saying, why should I change? I have the money. I have the power. I have the authority. They're telling the, the uh, employees, you change. And now no, they don't want to change. And I think that's a crux of it because you're absolutely right. This has always been the case. We want to scale and we want to do it with the talent that we have. That hasn't changed. But the COVID has said the leaders must change. Upper management, middle management, and probably lower management. And we talked about the competencies and the scale tension. But what is going on is fear. Corporate America is afraid that they could not be or will not be as big or strong or profitable as they were prior to the COVID. And why would that be the case? Well, some of you here in the U.S., I keep hearing this term, this term that is called quiet quitting, quiet quitting. And that term, I think, scares a lot of executives because they're saying, I don't know what that means, but I, I quitting means that they're not doing their work. And quiet means that they're not telling me that they're not doing their work. And so the biggest fear that I think businesses have is that I have resources that I'm paying for and I'm not getting my, the maximum competency out of that because I can't see them, because I, I don't have the controls, because all of that. And I think it's a money issue. Fine, business is money and it's a finance issue that perhaps they won't be as profitable as they could potentially be. So let's play on that fear because it probably is real for 80% of the companies here in the US. That being the case, how do you address that? And how you address it, I think, from my standpoint is you say, that your biggest fear is losing money because you don't know that how much you're losing or how much potential you could be making. And your people are the biggest assets that you have. And you're not quite sure of the, about the people. Prior to the recession or prior to the COVID situation, we had a top down approach, which is what Rebecca's talking about, the mission and the vision and all that. Well, that's top down. Here's where we're going and here's how we're doing it. And I just need all the people to follow it. Well, that may have shifted. The shift might now be, what people do I have? What are they doing? And what skills do they need to get to a level where I can be as profitable or even more profitable than I was before? So the fear that they may lose money, what if that shift happens to I can make 20, 30, 50% more if I address the people that I have and scale them up. And how do we do that? And I think coaching is one of the real key things that would help those people to do that. Because my experience, at least, is that coaching is not predominant in companies. Now, they may have it in the executives, high level, they can afford the time and the money and but they don't have it for the lower level or mid-level executives, at least from my experience. And I think that's where we can probably help them get to profitability, to excellence, to performance in the top level, the middle level, and the lower level. And I think coaching is really the key and answer to that. Now, convincing them is going to be a different thing, but I think this is the right strategy to approach it. Here's the nugget 
is that we've stepped into technology very quickly with Zoom with, uh, and I can tell you that I'm using much more micro coaching to be able to address it with my clients. That means that now I don't have to be front and center. They could be 24 seven at the time, the time that they want. So all of a sudden with the use of technology, we can be prolific all over the world because it's technology. Number one. Number two, we now have the ability to help in a group session. I think team coaching, community coaching, group session, group coaching is the new norm. It's not the norm now, but I think it's going to be the new norm. Whereas individual coaching, I think, is going to be the past because it's the numbers don't add up. Clients don't want to pay as much. So therefore, group coaching, team coaching, and now we could get a lot of people on the line. Uh, how do you coach 100 people online? Well, you facilitate and you complement with micro coaching, which is uh, the AI that I'm using. And the third thing is profitability. How do you prove that this affects the bottom line? And the key there is that it probably takes a trial period of 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, maybe it's three months, but it happens. We have proven that it happens to increase the growth and the potential for about 80% of the people. It's not 100%, maybe it's 80%, the 80-20 rule. So now the client can say, I have no choice. I, I can continue to argue this or I can bring in coaching to be able to address it, but I need to do it in a different way. It can't be one-on-one, -on -one. it has to be group. It has to be uh, less, uh, more cost effective. And it also has to encompass 24, seven, 365. And that's where AI steps in. It's here today, it's, and I'm doing it now.